Roe v. Wade, the court case that divided the United States. It is celebrated. It is hated. But one thing that everyone can agree on is its controversial nature and significance. One of the defining characteristics of this case is that all Americans, regardless of sex or race, care about the issue. It holds an importance to everyone and brings up many moral and ethical questions. In 1973, Norma McCorvey was pregnant with her third child, a baby she did not want. After a failed attempt at persuading authorities she was raped so that she could receive an abortion, she approached lawyers Linda Kofi and Sarah Weddington to challenge a Texas state law that made it nearly impossible to receive an abortion unless in extreme circumstances. Under the pseudonym of Jane Roe, Norma McCorvey and the legal team committed to changing abortion laws set on a conquest into an area of American life long hidden and ignored. However, dealing with abortion was inevitable, especially during the years where women's rights were a particularly active subject. On May 22, 1970, attorneys Coffey and Wennington tried their case, which turned into a class action suit in the U.S. District Court of Northern Texas. The three judges ruled that the Texas abortion limitations were unconstitutional and infringed the, the Ninth and Fourteenth Amendments rights of women. However, the judges did not grant injunction relief against enforcement of the laws, meaning that they would not give an order to prohibit the laws restricti restricting abortion. On these grounds, the plaintiffs appealed the case to the Supreme Court while Wade, the Texas District Attorney, appealed against the judge's rulings in favor of abortion. After days of argument and deliberation, the judges had finally made their decisions. The final verdict? The same as the district, district courts. Justices Blackman, Bennon, Marshall, and Powell argued that state laws guarding against abortion violated the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment by violating a woman's right to privacy. They believed that women have the right to terminate their pregnancy. However, because the state has the interests of protecting both the lives of the mother and the baby, the justices decided to allow states to specify during which stages in the mother's pregnancy she could abort her baby. Justices Berger, Douglas, and Stewart filed concurrent statements while Justices Rehnquist and White filed a dissenting opinion. Rehnquist said that he could not find anything in the language or history of the Constitution that supported the opinion of the majority judges, displaying his strict constructionist views. He explained that the court was declaring the right to privacy a fundamental right when the Constitution never specifically mentions the word privacy as a basic right. Before Roe v. Wade, laws regarding abortions were left to the jurisdiction of the individual states. The Roe v. Wade ruling nationally sanctioned abortion rights for women all over the country. It also gave safer options for women to get abortions as opposed to black market procedures performed by unlicensed physicians. On the other hand, this court case also gave birth to a number of pro-life groups such as the National Right to Life Committee, who believes that life begins at the moment of conception. The court case also made the pro-life, pro-choice division greater. The never-ending fight has been evident throughout the years with various protests and its importance is always highlighted in presidential debate. No matter what the majority of America thinks about abortion, Roe v. Wade has ultimately brought the issue of abortion to the forefront of American society.